Hey everyone, this is just a quick tutorial on how to get started with Posh TT. So we're going to go ahead and run the install script. All this does essentially is performs an apt-get update, update and installs the relevant packages. If you want to do this manually, you're more than welcome to do a git clone, uh, install the requirements using the install text file and then install the, re um, the Python requirements as well. So once we've done this, we can run it in one of two ways. So there's a posh2.service file which will run it as a systemctl service. So when you restart the host, the posh2 server will start it again. In this instance, uh, all I want to run uh, is the, I want to run the C2 server pretty quickly in the implant handler on the fly and modify this. So first of all, you need to go and edit the config.py file. So the main things you want to change in this is essentially these two fields here, which is the hostname IP address. Um, so this is the actual URL that the C2 server will call back to. If you're using domain fronting, this needs to be the SL connection uh, address. So for example, d0.awsstatic.com, uh, which is a domain fundable address in CloudFront. So you would change that there, and then you would add the default, um, the domain front header, which is your CloudFront instance. We can also change the project folder. So if we want to have multiple projects, we can call this project Zeus. Um, the Python install directory, unless you've modified it, will be in op, so it'll be posture to install Python. Uh, and by default, it's running on um, 443, which is the default HTTPS port. And it's opening on all interfaces, so change that if you don't want that to be the case. The default sleep, you can go ahead and change that to something like 15 seconds, uh, but for this instance, we're gonna keep it at five. The kill date is quite important because you want to make sure um, that your engagement stops after this time. Any persistence you've installed also stops. So this is quite an important key part. Any of the quick commands or down the URIs can be modified on the fly if you want to um, change this up to uh, this not be signatured. Uh, the sounds can also be modified. If you've got an API key for a clockwork SMS, this can also um, send you a text message when you get a new implant. The URLs is basically just an array of URLs that can be modified on the fly. Please note though, if you do change these and you are using something like an Apache redirector, you'll need to modify those as well. This is similar for the socks URLs as well. Uh, if you're using sharp socks for anything, uh, these are the URLs that will be passed to sharp socks um, should you decide to use that. The user agent is also a fairly generic user agent that IE will use, so you feel free to change it, but it shouldn't be signatured from a Posh2 perspective because it is quite a well-known user agent. And if you want to add a referrer header, you're more than welcome to as well. You can also modify the default HTTP responses, so this will respond as, as if it was an Apache Debian server, and you can modify all this if you want to be IIS. Um, also, ju um, during the, the curse, uh, the, sorry, the course of the C2 beacons, you will get uh, various responses when there's nothing. Uh, there's no commands to task. These are the responses that you can again modify. You can add whatever you want in there and then add this random data string which will get replaced. So you can add in um, uh, basically lots of different templates in there with files, folders, everything. Um, and then that will get responded to. The server header is also Apache by default, but again, this can be changed to IIS or Windows if you prefer. The insecure um, header here, just if you're using insecure comms and everything isn't just true uh, uh, valid signed SSL, then you'll need to add this as well. Don't change anything post here, but I'm going to scroll down and just show you that um, in a comment here, this is the default Apache rewrite rules that are based off the default comms, so you can use these as an example. And also you've got the sharp front forms here. So all you need to do is pop that into your Apache redirector, add the IP address, uh, restart the Apache service and this should be good to go. So once you're all happy with that, go ahead and save this. And what I tend to like to do is I use Terminator, I split my screen, have the input handler running on one and the C2 server running on the other. So Python opt, uh, whatever folder you install that as, by default it'll be posh2 underscore Python. You want to run the C2 server. This will go ahead and as usual create all your payloads on the fly. It will also add you a quick start.txt file where it will install all this too. The other thing you want to run again is the implant handler as we normally do. So we want to run, go to the posh2 and run the implant handler, which will then um, have no implants currently. So if you want to go get started very quickly, I'm just going to go run this one liner on a host.
hopefully we will get an implant as we did. On the side here, you can actually see it running as implant ID one. So to interact with that implant, just type one. You can use uh, various things, one comma two comma three or one to five, depending on how implants. If you want to just get going, you'll be running in a PowerShell process. So we can test that by just running a get process hyphen ID. And that'll tell you what process you're running in. And then we can also migrate. So that tells us here we are running in a PowerShell process. So we want to migrate from that so that if any, any IOC devices or any, any on host EDR programs that see it, that there'll be PowerShell running. So we can now kill this implant. Are you sure? Yes, we do. So now we've only got one implant running on implant two. If we run the same thing, hopefully you'll see the default IOC for Posh is NetSH. So you can change your list by migrating to whatever you want. But that's the default of how to get set up with Posh G2.